This video is going to be all the information I wish I knew before starting film photography. First thing, know what you're getting yourself into. While it is incredibly rewarding, it's also incredibly expensive. Film is not cheap. Developing your film is not cheap. Scanning your film is not cheap. But after you pick up a camera like this, the chance you'll fall in love with the, the feeling of it and the sounds and the whole process of shooting film is very high. So once you start, you will not want to stop and you'll bring a camera everywhere and it will just uh, drain your bank account. And that's something to be aware of. The second point, have patience. Film photography or analog photography specifically is a great way to train your brain to get away from instant gratification because you need to get your settings right, you need to frame it up correctly, you need to meter the light and then after you take the photo you won't know what it looks like for days or even weeks. The first photo I shot on this camera, I, I spotted a little scene that I thought looked nice, I sat down, framed my shot up, got my settings, hit the shutter and then immediately pulled my camera down and looked at the back of the camera and just laughed at myself because of course you can't see anything. <laughs> Which I was very used to from digital photography. It's always just like immediately checking the image after you take it. It becomes like a muscle memory kind of thing. That's something you get out of with shooting analog. I've heard other people mention that they, they like that the photo is just out of their mind the second that they take it. It allows you to be more in the moment and focus on the next shot and be more, more present when taking photos. Now the light metering part of that doesn't apply to all cameras. There is some cameras like this, a little bit more modern one that has a light meter built in. But if you're looking to buy your first camera, I would recommend going for a completely manual SLR because it just makes you jump in the deep end immediately and really learn the basics from the ground up before you move onto other camera platforms. So yeah, patience, patience, patience. Breathe, slow down. The third point, gear doesn't matter. Kind of. If you spend some time going down the YouTube rabbit hole of film photography, you'll see people use some very expensive cameras like Leicas and Hasselblads. And of course, it will be nice to shoot with fancy, expensive, exclusive cameras like that. But if you're anything like me, you're not ready to drop several thousand euros or dollars on a new hobby you're just getting into. But rest assured, there is cheaper options out there. You might have a family member that has an old film camera laying around they're no longer using, or you can find some on eBay for not too much money, or secondhand camera stores, or you could get lucky at uh, like an antique market somewhere local to you. For example, I picked up this camera from a secondhand camera store for 99 euros. This camera was a gift, so it was free. And this one I found at a secondhand market for only 10 euros, which was a great deal, but I'll make another video about this one soon. You can take fantastic photos with super cheap gear. However, I would recommend staying away from disposable cameras because the money you're spending on that, you can just buy an, another camera that you can reuse. And buying film, scanning film, developing film is expensive enough, so I would recommend you put your money over there before dropping your whole life savings on a Leica. The next point understanding light okay so you've bought a camera and you're ready to start shooting let's break down what taking a photo actually is you are using a camera to capture light on the film there are several factors to consider in how you're capturing this light the first one you'll be confronted with is the iso on your film sometimes also referred to as asa on the camera itself this refers to the sensitivity of the film now on the lower end of the sensitivity you have films like Cinestill 50D, Agfa APX100 or Kodak Portra 160. And on the other end of the spectrum, you have some what are considered faster films like Cinestill 800T or even Kodak T-Max 3200. And the number in these films refers to the sensitivity of the film. Now, why some of these films are considered faster films brings us to our next point, which is shutter speed. This is how long the shutter in your camera stays open when you hit the button to take a photo. Now on most cameras this will range from bulb mode which leaves the shutter open for as long as you hold the button down. This is usually used for taking photos at night or long exposure shots. All the way down to 1 500th of a second, 1 1,000th of a second and even 1 2,000th of a second depending on what camera you're using. A film being considered fast means that it's more sensitive to light which will allow you to use a higher shutter speed, meaning you can freeze a fast movement and not have any motion blur. Usually when you're shooting handheld, it is best to keep your shutter speed above 1 30th of a second. Going any slower will most likely result in your photos coming out very shaky and blurry. 
Finally, we get to aperture, which is often referred to as F. This refers to how wide you're opening up your lens and how much light it is letting in. Higher number means smaller hole, so less light. Lower number means bigger hole, so more light. Aperture is also closely related to focus. Having a wide aperture will create what is known as a shallow depth of field, and closing your aperture up will widen your, your field of focus, so a larger area will be in focus. Sometimes your lighting conditions will limit you slightly in the um, shutter speed and aperture that you can use. However, very often you will have some leeway and some creative freedom in, in what you want to use. So if you're looking for something with a little bit of motion blur to capture movement or, or as like a creative choice, you have to go for a lower shutter speed, which means you have to close your aperture down so the shutter stays open longer. And if you're trying to capture something fast moving like nature photography or sports photography, open your lens up and increase that shutter speed. The only thing you'll be stuck with is your ISO because it'll be the same for the entire roll of film that you shoot. So you need to think about that before you go out and take photos. The next point, do not open your camera up after you have put in a roll until it is completely done. If you open the back of a camera with a roll in there while you're still shooting it, because it'll completely expose all the film in the back of your camera, this will completely ruin all your photos and generally make you very sad. But also you have to accept that at some point this will happen to you. A camera might malfunction, the light seals in your camera might be old or deteriorated, or you can just mindlessly open up the back when you've forgotten you've already put a roll in there. It will happen to you. Uh, you need to accept it as a rite of a film photography passage and just pray that it doesn't happen to you when you're doing a shoot for a client. The final points, light metering and Sony 16. Okay, so you've loaded up a roll of film and you're ready to go and shoot. Some cameras, especially the more modern ones, will have internal light meters, which look something like this. The camera will tell you if your photo is underexposed or overexposed. And usually with cameras like these, you can set it to a certain value and it will automatically adjust your settings to have the correct light. However, if you're starting with something more older and mechanical, these cameras will either not have an internal light meter or it might be broken or like the one I have, it takes a battery that is no longer made, so the light meter in here is essentially useless. So I recommend you use a light meter app for your phone. Now, I used this app. I really like it, it works great. You start by setting your ISO for whatever film you're using, then you select what aperture you want to shoot at, and the app will tell you what shutter speed to use. Usually, I will slightly overexpose my photos just to ensure I have enough light. In practice, this means I will set my aperture one stop farther open than the light meter tells me, or I will set my shutter speed one stop slower than whatever the light meter tells me to do. If you come from digital photography, this overexposing might seem a little counterintuitive, but with digital photography, you have the option to retrieve a lot of detail from the shadows in post, with film, however, this is not the case. Film tends to be more forgiving with overexposing and will retain more detail in the lighter areas and it will lose detail in the shadows a lot faster. So in order to make sure your photos are correctly exposed, I tend to overexpose my photos by half a stop or one stop. Most film stocks will be pretty forgiving with overexposing and are quite flexible with how much light you give them. Another method you could use is the Sunny 16 system. Now, this is a system you can use to estimate the correct settings for whatever photo you're taking. Firstly, you will start by setting your shutter speed to the number that is closest to the ISO of the film you have loaded. Then you just observe your surroundings and set your aperture according to the conditions you're trying to shoot. Full bright sunlight will have you set your aperture to 16. This is where the system gets its name. Having some clouds will have you go down to F11. Being fully overcast will have you go down to F8. Being indoors will have you go down to 5.6 and so on until the darkest conditions will have you set your lens to as far as it'll go open. Now, using a system will require quite a bit of practice. I personally do not have it down yet. If you want to use the Sunny 16 system, I would recommend you practice alongside with a light meter. So you first try to do it in your head and then check with the light meter if your guesses were correct. Practice like that before you rely on it completely to make sure you don't just ruin rolls of film. Finally, just have some fun with it. Having the knowledge in the back of your mind that it costs you money every time you hit the shutter button. Might give you some, some anxiety or apprehension about taking a photo, but in the end, I think it trains your eye and it trains you to trust your intuition. The process is quite different to shooting digital. It has personally made me a lot more deliberate about what photo I want to take, and also probably a little bit more critical of if a scene is even worthy of photographing. But a good general rule to stick to is if you feel the impulse to take a photo, 
you should just go for it because you never know what might work out and often the best photos have little happy accidents in them. So yeah, just trust yourself. Constraints breed creativity. And in a world of AI and cameras being in everyone's pocket, placing these limitations on yourself forces you to shift your perspective and change your attitude towards photography. It slows you down in a world that is speeding up every day. And I think in the end, it makes you a better photographer, a better artist, and maybe even a better person. So thank you for watching. Go out and take some photos and uh, I'll see you on the next one.